Existing public policy decisions and approaches by higher levels of government have been inadequate and are not working. They're full of gaps and they have led to significant public safety concerns, not only by the people standing here today, but by the members of the public that we serve. We need to improve the supports and services for people living with complex, untreated substance use disorders and mental health issues. There's a very small percentage but a concerning number of people who have significant mental health issues to the point where they are dangerous. They're a risk to the general public and they can't be wandering the streets of Vancouver or the Lower Mainland or Vancouver Island or Prince George or Kelowna. They need to be securely treated with mandatory care to be protected from themselves and to protect the general public. Full stop. We serve this city with great compassion for our most vulnerable, but it is not compassionate to allow people who pose a serious and immediate danger to themselves and others to wander our streets with serious and untreated mental health disorders. It is not compassionate to compromise the safety of our community to let violent, chronic and dangerous offenders out of jail when they pose a serious risk to reoffend. And it's not compassionate in the middle of a near decade long drug crisis and a province wide gang conflict to say that we are not doing everything in our grasp to secure our ports. I've always taken the approach, I, I like to be progressive and try new things, but I will say that the way that decriminalization was rolled out uh, didn't work, it was a failure. I feel like the proper supports were not put in place. So you basically just allowed people to do whatever they wanted on the streets and it was mayhem. The police had no ability to deal with people that were um, you know, causing trouble in front of businesses, smoking methamphetamine in front of businesses and restaurants, people that were just doing whatever they want, wherever they wanted, and you can't have that. You have to have some boundaries in society for human, uh, human conduct. We, we all expect that. We expect that of our kids and we expect it in society and we have lots of laws and regulations that, that address that. So the powers of the police were severely restricted, didn't work, and the supports were not there to help people. But what we're talking about here is going way upstream from that and we're talking about helping that person who has decompensated at three o'clock in the morning to the point where they're waving a knife around well let's back that up like the cops are going to respond at three o'clock in the morning to address that person waving the knife around threatening people danger to the community themselves but how did that person get there so let's get that person to a better place in life so they're not waving a knife around so they're not having ideation about hurting other people and let's make sure when people need treatment, it's treatment on demand, it's available. And for some people that don't want treatment, that could be the person you know, waving the knife around, that we do have processes in place to get that person treatment so we help them to help themselves and keep the community safe. We do have a good model here, but it's just not sufficient because we don't have that piece in place on the healthcare side to address people that are severely addicted and mentally ill